Hi guys, it's me again. And I'm here today to answer all of your questions about modeling. As I know, it's very confusing. It's very hard to like understand this crazy world, but I'm here to help you with that. So please, before the video starts, don't forget to like the video and to subscribe under here and also share with a friend that also has the same doubts as you. And here we go. So starting the video, I'm gonna, of course, start with the number one question, which is how do you start modeling? So for you to start modeling, first of all, you need to um, have photos, just simple photos. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on a simple camera. You don't need anything crazy. No makeup, no hair. And doesn't matter if you have like dark circles or pimples, whatever, it doesn't matter. No makeup, no hair, uh, white or black t-shirt or gray and jeans. And then you take some photos smiling, some photos like from the side and with the hair up, hair down, you know, very simple. You know, if you want to, you know, to Google about it, you can write model Polaroids, you know, on Google. And then you will see, you know, how how it works uh, with the photos. But you need to have those photos to show your true beauty, you know? And then you need to have full body, sitting down, standing, cropped, just face. And that will help you a lot to get an agency. Because that that's like the number one thing for, even for us that already like everyone knows our faces and all of that, we still need to do that. Just so the clients know how we look, you know? So for you to find an agency, you need to have that, number one. Number two, it's to know what agency will be good for you. You can DM an agency or you can uh, send to their website those photos that I told you, the model Polaroids, and send your measurements. So bust, waist, hips, and height, and also size of shoes and, and clothing, just in case. And, and then they will contact you from there. You know, but it's very important that you don't have any makeup. I know it's horrible, especially for when you get used to like using makeup all the time to cover your imperfections that you think you have. Uh, but it's important for the agency to know how you how you look like because in the end, when you get to a job, you're gonna have to let them do whatever they wanna do to you. So if they're gonna be like, okay, you're not gonna wear makeup for this job, you're gonna have to accept that. Or if they wanna put your hair in a certain way that you find yourself ugly or whatever you're gonna have to let them do that and not say anything because when you're a model you have to just accept that people will have to do they they will do whatever they find best for you you know no, this doesn't matter your opinion so uh you have to send these photos with no makeup so a lot of you guys ask me about height and being signed by an agency and if there is like a height that it's better and easier or whatever. Since I started modeling 10 years ago and now lots of things have changed. I've been seeing so many models that are short. I don't know if this is like an American thing or if this is going to like happen all over the world. But like I see a lot of girls that are very short, you know, like 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and whatever, uh, you know, working a lot and now it's not even about height anymore and i feel like it all depends of like what type of model you would be but in the end like for photos you could if you look tall in the photos that's all that matters you know so i don't think that that would be a thing but also like i'm not an agency so i have no idea but like the agencies now i feel like they're looking for like people that could influence and that doesn't mean that you need to have followers that just means that like you are so cool that you sell anything that they put on you you know so you i don't know you wear like a top and everyone's like oh my gosh this top is the best top i'm gonna buy it you know do so you just have to be that person that sells everything you know so i feel like uh you know i've been seeing a lot of like those girls that like they maybe look tall in the photos, but they are super short and they work a lot. 
so i don't think that that would be a, a thing that would be on your way anymore so it works like this once you get signed uh, the client comes and email the agency hey i'm looking for uh, i don't know a brown a white and a black model for a hair uh, for a hair shoot and so they send the options of all the brown girls all the blonde and all the black and then they choose from there which ones they either want to see or they already booked them from there that's how the castings happen the castings are when a client is looking for models but they don't know who they want to book so they want to see them in person to be 100 sure that that's the girl that they want to book or guy so uh Castings could be a bit overwhelming for models because of that because you get there and like, you know, you have to be very confident to show them that like you are the best for their job, for, for that job, you know, so it's a bit horrible, I would say. I hate doing castings. There's nothing worse for me because they're judging you by your appearance in your face and sometimes you can see right away that they love you and most of the times you can see that they hate you so it's it's the most horrible moment of modeling for me is castings so whatever if the kind loves you they're gonna book you and that's just how it works so it's really just about uh, if you shoot very good if you look very good in their clothes and or the type of beauty that they are looking at that exact moment so in the end our job is either like doing the best that we can to sell that thing or you know just looking good at all times and have incredible photos to show our beauty and about the stretch marks uh that was that was in my way for some campaigns and stuff in miami because people really don't want to be spending their time photoshopping you know stretch marks on girls bums so so yeah it was a, a bit tough in the beginning but you know in the end like people realize that like you know everyone has stretch marks like there is not even one girl that i've seen including the supermodels that don't have stretch marks of course some people have more and some people have less and because of my skin color uh i feel like you can see more because they're so much lighter than my actual skin but still everyone has it and so i heard from this agency like oh you'll never be able to book vs blah 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 so that was always in my head and i was always like uh, putting myself down because of it but once i say like fuck it this is what i'm gonna do this is how i'm going to be you know the things just started happening and then i started working for vs.com and then i did the show twice so i don't think that you know that was ever on my way after i say fuck it you know a lot of people also wanted to know how to be an international model well that is a you know uh, a tricky question for me because i am not an agency i'm just a girl that made it out out of brazil uh but i'm gonna tell you my story so back then, uh, you know, I wanted to go to Sao Paulo, which is the biggest uh, fashion city in Brazil. And no, none of the agencies said yes to me. All of them say like, oh, she's not what we're looking for at the moment. And at the moment, the trend of beauty was like the uh, European Russian looking woman, you know? So it was very tough for me. And my agent was like okay let's try internationally and i was like oh my gosh really like how like i don't even speak english i don't know i don't know what to say and then he started sending to like all the agencies that like he knew because he, he already had other models you know all over the world so he was like okay i'm gonna send uh i'm gonna send her to london miami new york whatever and all of them say that they were interested but they asked the question that was the worst question for me does she speak English? And I didn't know anything. All I knew was like, hi, my name is Giselle and uh, nice to meet you. And I love you, bye, hi. You know, those those are the only things that I knew. And so, and I would get very nervous every time someone like asked me something in English. So I was like, oh my gosh, like this is not gonna work. But then Miami was the one place that said, okay, 
you know, uh, we don't care if she doesn't speak English, she can learn here. Because in the end, everyone in Miami speaks Spanish and Spanish is very similar to Portuguese. So like, I could get away with not speaking English. And, but hopefully, you know, I met some someone, a boyfriend that helped me to learn English. But uh, I only went to like London and New York and all the other places after I was speaking English which was way easier for me because I saw, I, you know, I see many people that like try to like go and do things and it was so much harder. I'll never forget London, how hard it was for me because I was used to American accent. And then I go to London and the accent is so different and people speak in, in a way that like, it was so hard for me to understand. I was like, I can't like, I would sit on the sidewalk and cry from like how much, you know, that was tough for me. It was so horrible. It was so horrible. So language is a, is a barrier, you know, it's a huge barrier. But in the end, you know, uh, for you to become an international model, you need to find an agency in another country that, that wants to have you. And then you have to do your visa. For example, here in America, you need a work visa to come. And, you know, it's, it's very hard to get the work visa because you have to show that you are a working model and you want to come here and add value to the country, you know? You cannot just be like, hey, I'm going, you know, you have to, it's it's a lot that you have to do before you come. And so yes, uh, it depends of where you're going, really. How do I move to a big city if I have no money? Well, <laughs> when I came to America, I had no money whatsoever, not even money for food which was the toughest thing for me because the agency would only give a $50 gift card and I would have to buy the weekly food with that. And you cannot really buy much with $50. So I was really starving in the beginning. But, you know, if the agency believes in you, they are going to put you in the model's apartment, which is, uh, it could be the best thing of your life or the worst. <laughs> no in between. <laughs> I would say, uh, I never, I had some bad experiences, like girls stealing my stuff and, and eating my food, even though I didn't have money to buy my own food. Like I would go to like Chipotle and buy a burrito and eat like half of it for lunch and half of it for dinner. And then sometimes this other half was like eating. So, you know, it was a bunch of like little things like this that pissed me off. But, you know, the agency puts you in a model's apartment and they give you an allowance a week. But all of this, of course, you pay after with jobs. So, you know, some girls, they go to a city and, uh, you know, they don't work and then they are owning money to the agency. And some girls, they, uh, you know, they go and, and work and start working, working like crazy and they pay for that and they start making extra money. So here comes the second question, which is when do models start making money? And that's the thing, you know, it really depends on how much you work and the jobs that you're getting. Because in the beginning, they don't pay you much. Uh, so you have to, you know, and as a, a girl that is not American, they always took 50% out of every money that I made. 30 goes to the government and 20 to the agency. And so it's a bit tough, you know, for, for us that come from other countries. But yeah, that was always like uh, the, the one thing that for me was horrible and harder to start, you know, making money it was because you want so much money to the agency because you have to pay for your flight, for your visa, for your apartment, for the weekly allowance and maybe other things that you need, like, you know, the ride from the airport to the, to, to the house. And like, I remember they got me in this big car. So that car must have cost like, I don't know, $200. And $200 for me was like, oh my gosh, this is so much money, you know? So like when you have no money at all, every dollar counts. So it's very tough in the beginning, but you know, it's, uh, you know, usually the agency helps those girls because they know that like, there is no way that this girl that, you know, has no money is gonna survive in the city renting her own apartment, you know? So, so yeah, that's how usually people do it. So if you wanna move, 
from like your hometown, whatever, to the big city to start working, uh, the agency will put you in the model's apartment and then from you go from there. Does modeling get boring? I would say that it really depends of uh, how your life end up going. Because for example, uh, you always work with different people, you know, and different places and different jobs. But when you do e-com, for example, which is like when you go to a website to shop and your photo is there, you know, and you're like that, showing the clothes. This gets a bit boring because it's just like change, go there, do the same poses front, side and back, and then you change and do the same over and over again the whole day. That gets a bit boring, but this is the one thing that made me have all those things that I have today, you know? Because modeling is not just like, oh my gosh, look at that Fendi campaign, look at that Prada campaign, look at that Gucci campaign, look at the, you know? It, modeling is not just that. Like, you make way more money doing those things that people are not really looking at, you know, as a thing that like, oh, girls are making money off this, you know? So, uh, the money that I made my whole life was more with e -com. And sometimes it gets boring because of that. But modeling itself, it's not boring because it's not like you're going to the one place every day and doing the same thing every day and, you know, like working in a computer or whatever, you know? And it's always different, it's always different people. Everyone is so much fun. Everyone is like, you know, has their own story and like you always talk and I don't know, it's just, uh, it really depends of, you know, what you're doing at that moment. I felt like sometimes when I was doing too much, e-com was getting a bit boring for me, but I think in the end, you know, uh, you book a different job and you do a magazine and you feel more like awake and I was like, okay, like now I feel like I'm modeling for real. Those are the things that like change with time, you know, you just get used to like, uh, you know, doing the things knowing like, okay, I'm doing this and this is good money and that's it. Uh, a lot of people ask me about weight, the weight situation. And uh, I don't think, besides that agency Miami, I don't think anyone uh, ever told me to lose weight again. Uh, if anything, they told me like, work out, work out, like it's gonna be good for you. And it really did change my life because, uh, you know, just being skinny is not the same as like being skinny and fit. So working out uh, helped me a lot, you know, also to like feel better about myself and feel more confident. So that really changed my life. But besides that, I don't think anyone told me like, oh, you have to lose weight. Even like when I gain weight now during quarantine, everyone was very understanding of my situation. And they never told me like, oh, you're not gonna book this because you're fat or, or whatever, you know? Everyone was very understanding. That does happen to girls, like that agencies go and tell them stuff. Uh, but like, if that the agency did that to you, then that means like that they're no good for you. You know, you should go to the next one that will either accept you the way that you are at that moment or that, you know, will uh, help you. Is it truth that magazines don't pay? That is truth, uh, which is crazy because you are working, you know, uh, for free. <laughs> so that's the one thing about modeling that like, and I would never understand is like why they don't pay for magazines. Sometimes they pay you, I don't know if you have to travel to the place, they would pay you the flight or the hotel you know, but they would not pay you for their magazine. And, you know, I sometimes got, you know, uh, a bit of money with magazines, but like nothing that like I could even buy something, you know, or like pay my bills. <laughs> it was just like, oh, here's something just so you know that like, you know, you're not working for free, you know, but most of them like 99.9, .9, percent of the magazines are for free but you know being a cover of a magazine is like every model's dream like since i was a little kid that's the one thing that i always wanted was to be in the cover of a magazine i will never forget the day that i was in paris i was renewing my us visa so i was i was like okay i'm gonna be in europe for a bit 
and I was in Paris and my agency in Brazil said, hey, like El Brazil wants to put you on the cover. I bought the flight, which was so expensive, last minute, to go to Brazil. And then I flew back the next day. So I went from Paris to Brazil, just so I could do this one cover. Uh, and then I flew back. And of course, nobody paid for anything. <laughs> they didn't pay for a hotel, they didn't pay for anything, you know? So I paid to be in the cover. Let's just say it like that, you know? So yes, it's true. Has anyone told you anything here about your appearance? Well, I, yes. Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. I was going to do a show and I was in Milan and I was doing the fitting to confirm. So sometimes that happens at shows that they kind of confirm you, but like they still wanna know if you're gonna look good in the clothes, you know? Uh, so I was doing this fitting and they put me in this one dress that was one size smaller than me. And of course on my hips, it wasn't fitting. And they, they, they would always ask like if you speak Italian, but Italian is also very similar to Portuguese. I can understand. I don't speak, but I understand like almost everything. I understand just as good as I understand Spanish. Let's just put it that way. So I was there and I, you know, they thought that I was like, you know, that I was not understanding what they were saying. And then the woman said, uh, like, if I have to fix this dress, I would have to redo the whole thing because she's fat, put it in another girl. And I was like, size, I was size zero at the time. You know, I was not like, you know, now I'm, I'm like a size two, but back then I was a size zero. And that was like, you know, I was like, is she really saying that about me? Like thinking that I'm not understanding. I got so sad. I was like, why am I even doing this? Like I was, I was always like trying so hard to do runaway shows, but they, they humiliate models so much and they treat us like garbage. Like it makes no sense for us to be doing this, but we do it because we, we either need the money, of course, number one, and two, because it's our dream. Like we wanna be in the biggest runaway shows, you know? So that was uh, one of the most horrible moments. And the second one was when I was in London, not long ago, uh, that was in 2017, right before I got the VS show. Uh, this guy, which is, uh, you know, a guy that is known for having beautiful dresses and he always books like VS models and like, you know, sexy girls for the runway so i go there do the casting and they like me so they tell me to go to do the fitting but the fitting was like at the end of the day so i already knew that the fittings have been going on since the morning so everyone's tired and there's not enough clothes left and i get there and then he looks at me and he's like oh i need a tall girl like tall like this is not this is not it and i'm like you guys tell me to come like you guys tell me to come here you know and and he's like okay go 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 try something i'm like okay like you know but i i was holding on not to cry at the time you know and i was like okay um so then i go and try it on he's like yeah like and it was a dress that for sure was for a girl that was like 5 11 you know or like six feet and I was 5'9", so to him I was very short. And then I'm like, okay. Uh, like He's like, okay, go try something else. So he put me in like four different dresses, all of them, one of them looked good on me, but like, you know, in the end he was like, thank you, like, hey, thank you. And I was like, oh my gosh, like they tell me to come, they make me waste my whole afternoon coming here because I remember I was staying a bit far so it took me almost one hour to get to the place and then he does that to me you know so those were the things that like you know people uh, really don't think before they do things and I don't know why some people treat models like that you know like we they treat us like we are really like less you know do you have to pay for your flight when you travel for work the answer is no, they, you don't pay for your flight, you don't pay for your food, but they give you an allowance. 
and they pay for your hotel for the amount of nights that you are staying there so for example if you were staying in a place for like uh three days they have to pay for four nights so it's the night before so you can wake up in the morning and go to work and then on the last day you leave so they would you know so that's how it works for sure for sure you get paid more for campaigns than runway shows unless you are a supermodel uh, but if you are you know a regular model or a new face they will pay more for campaigns uh, but you know the better money is in the jobs that people really don't see like the e-com and like those things like this so yes so in the end modeling is all about like you hustling 24 7 to get to people get people to like you and people to you know it's it's crazy but you know in the end it's worth it if you love it you know but you need to love with all of your heart because you go through a lot of things that you know it's very tough that was it guys thank you so much for watching this video and for sending me your questions i really appreciate that and stay tuned for the next videos and don't forget to subscribe and also share with a friend <laughs> bye